Hello, my name is Jay Hanna from the Department of Energy, National Energy Technology Laboratory, and I will be discussing with you today the process for preparing and submitting your application for formula grants to states of Indian tribes for preventing outages and enhancing the resilience of the electric grid, also known as grid resilience grants, under the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, Section 40101D. The presenta presentation topics will include what is an ALRD, registration and pre-application requirements, required application documents, how to submit an application, and frequently asked questions. The ALRD, or Administrative and Legal Requirements document, outlines the requirements and provides guidance to states and the Indian tribes for preparation of formula grant applications in response to the Section 40101D of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, also known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, or BIL. And ALRD is being used for this formula grant opportunity instead of a funding opportunity announcement, which you may be familiar with if you have applied for federal financial assistance grants in the past. The DOE National Energy Technology Laboratory, or NETL, will award and administer your grant agreement on behalf of the DOE Grid Deployment Office, or GDO. For your application, you'll need to identify the sole authorized applicant on behalf of the state or Indian tribe. You'll need to also identify your principal investigator, which is essentially the technical project manager, and your business point of contact. The application requirements are found in ALRD Section 4, Response Application Information. It provides the required information and documents needed to apply for a formula grant. We have placed all this information on the website um, accessed by the link below. The application forms are also available from that same website. There are several one-time actions meaning that if you've done it before, you don't need to do it again. That must be completed before submitting an application in response to this ALRD. You must register with the System of Awards Management, or SAM. You must obtain a Unique Entity Identifier, or UEI, and you must register with FedConnect. Uh, be aware that these systems require electronic signatures. Acknowledgement of, a, of award documents by the grantee's authorized representative through electronic systems used by the Department of Energy, including FedConnect, constitutes the grantee's acceptance of the terms and conditions of the award. Acknowledgement via FedConnect by the grantee's authorized representative constitutes the grantee's electronic signature. I will address each of these three um, steps in the upcoming slides. Applicants must register with SAM at sam.gov prior to submitting an application in response to this ALRD. Designating an electronic business point of contact or eBiz POC and obtaining a special password called an MPIN are important steps in the SAM registration. If the applicant currently has an active SAM.gov registration, it does not need to do this again. That registration will apply to this ALRD. The applicant must maintain an active SAM.gov registration with current information at all times during which it has an active federal award or an application under consideration. Applicants must also obtain a unique entity identifier or UEI from SAM to uniquely identify the entity. The UEI is available in the SAM entity registration record. Subawardees and subrecipients at all tiers must also obtain a UEI from SAM and provide the UEI to the award recipient before the subaward can be issued. If the applicant or, or subrecipient has already obtained a UEI for another federal grant, it does not need to do this step again. That UEI may be used for this ALRD. Uh, note that the UEI replaces the DUNS number that was previously required for federal grants. If you had federal grants in the past, you probably are aware that you used to have to have a DUNS number, and this replaces that. Applicants must register with FedConnect to submit applications in response to the ALRD, to submit questions, and to receive the resulting grant award. 
For more information regarding the registration process for FedConnect, review the FedConnect Ready, Set, Go guide at fedconnectreadysetgo.pdf at the, at the link provided. If the applicant has already registered in FedConnect for another federal grant, it does not need to do this step again. There are several uh, documents that are required with your application under this ALRD. I'm going to go through each one of these in the upcoming slides. They are the program narrative, the head of government letter or tribal council resolution, the SF-424, the environmental questionnaire, the disclosure of lobbying activities, and the pre-award information sheet. In the ALRD section four, called the ALRD response application information section, you will see this table. This also provides all of the required um, documents for your ALRD application. Following this table in the ALRD, uh, there is an explanation of each one of these with specific instructions. All of the forms and templates you need to apply for the Section 40101D formula grants to state and Indian tribes are available at the link provided here. If you have trouble downloading individual forms and templates from that site due to the version of Adobe you have not being able to open fillable forms in your browser, it might be easier to click on the option, download all files. This will give you the option to open a zip folder by clicking on open file in the new box in the upper right hand corner of your browser and then save that file to your computer. Or when the box opens, simply drag the folder icon and drop onto your desktop. The zip folder contains all of the required documents and templates. The first item that you will need to prepare will be the program narrative. The program narrative is intended to convey the strategy the state or Indian tribe will use for making grid resilience investments with the Section 40101D grant funds and for documenting the impacts of those investments. DOE anticipates that the program narrative will be between 5 and 15 pages depending upon the grant amount or your federal allocation and the complexity of the resilient strategies. The program narrative requirements and a program narrative template are provided in the ALRD and the template is also provided on the NETL website where the application and forms are also provided. The link is provided here. After you have completed the program narrative, save the information in a single file using the naming convention below. For example, Wyoming Program Narrative PDF. The program narrative must include several required sections. Uh, the objectives and metrics. Three to five objectives and associated metrics that the applicant intends to apply for guiding their resilience investment decisions. The criteria, the description of the criteria used for selecting and determining the awards to eligible entities. Methods, the description of the methods the applicant anticipates using for soliciting, awarding, distributing funds and monitoring outcomes using the metrics that were developed in the objectives and metrics section. The funding distribution, a description of the funding distributions and categories of recipients of the subgrants to be provided to eligible entities. The equity approach, the description of the plan that the state or Indian tribe will employ to ensure that their proposed project will incorporate quality jobs, community benefits, and diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Technical assistance and administration. A description of how the state or Indian tribe intends to utilize up to 5% of the federal grant funds for project administration and technical assistance. Public notice and hearing. Description of the notice and the public hearing process and outcomes, including the number and types of organizations that attended. We ask that you attach or append a copy of the public notice to the program narrative. There is additional information in all of these items in both the program narrative template and in the ALRD. You are also required to submit a head of government letter or a tribal council resolution. The purpose of this document is to verify to the Department of Energy that the applicant is the sole authorized applicant on behalf of the state or Indian tribe and has the authority to apply for, receive, and administer the resulting grant agreement including providing the required cost match. 
Indian tribes may submit either a head of government letter or a tribal council, solution, tribal council resolution, whichever is customary. Please save this document using the naming convention below as a PDF. For example, Florida head of government letter dot PDF or Birch Creek Indian tribe tribal council resolution dot PDF. You're also required to submit an SF-424, which is the standard application for federal assistance, which you may have uh, su submitted for any other federal grant uh, or cooperative agreement that you've applied for in the past. This form contains basic information uh, regarding the applicant location, point of contact, and, and other relevant information pertaining to the organization that is applying. An instruction sheet is provided on the same web page where the form is posted on the NETL website. I would like to bring your attention to one particular section of the SF-424. That is the estimated funding section. Section A, federal funding, will be the year one allotment for your state or Indian tribe. The year one funding or formula allocations are provided at this website. Item B, applicant funding, will be the 15% cost match on the year one federal amount. All other funding fields, C, D, E, and F, will be zero. Note that the required cost match provided by eligible entities performing resilience projects will be captured when you provide the resilience project and sub-award sub notification post-award. You are also required to submit an environmental questionnaire. The National Environmental Policies Act environmental questionnaire you submit with your grant application will address only the technical assistance administrative activities. The initial award will only authorize the technical assistance administrative activities. Resilience projects and associated subawards must be approved individually post award and will require separate environmental questionnaires. Technical assistance and administrative activities are called Group A activities. For the initial grant application, once you complete Section 2 questionnaire, you may check the Group A box, which pertains to technical assistance and administrative activities, and then proceed directly to Section 3, certification by proposer, and sign the forms. The instructions pertaining to this are at the bottom of the page. So you will find that in the environmental questionnaire, there are many pages to this questionnaire, but for the initial grant application, you only need to fill out the, the first page shown on this slide and then go to the last page and sign the form. You'll be required to submit an SFLLL, which is Disclosure of Lobbying Activities. Prime recipients and subrecipients may not use any federal funds to influence or attempt to influence directly or indirectly congressional action on any legislative or appropriation matters. Prime recipients and subrecipients are required to complete and submit the SFLLL called the Disclosure of Lobbying Activities to ensure that non-federal funds have not been paid and will not be paid to any person influencing or attempting to influence with any of the following in connection with the application. An officer or an employee of any federal agency, a member of Congress, an officer or employee of Congress, or an employee of a member of Congress. And finally, you must submit a pre-award information sheet. The pre-award information sheet provides important business and financial information that will allow DOE to process your application and establish the appropriate terms and conditions for the grant agreement. Once you have completed all of the required documents, you need to submit your complete application through FedConnect in accordance with the ALRD Section 4 Response Application Information section. Follow the submission instructions, including the guidance pertaining to the required documents, the content and form of the documents, file naming convention for the documents. For more information on how to submit your application in, Fed, in FedConnect, review the FedConnect Ready, Set, Go guide at the link provided. Additionally, FedConnect has a support email address and a phone number that you may call for assistance provided here. DOE recommends submitting your application as soon as possible prior to September 30th to allow you time to resolve any unforeseen problems when submitting your application.
I'm now going to address frequently asked questions. What are the most significant differences between the draft ALRD released with a notice of intent and the request for information and the final ALRD that was recently posted? First, I would advise you to please review and be familiar with the entire ALRD posted in FedConnect. As it pertains to the application process, the most notable changes are the number of documents you must submit for your application was reduced. Notably, the SF-424A and the budget justification forms are no longer required. Number two, the allowance of pre-award costs was clarified. Number three, the program narrative requirements were revised. Number four, changes were made to ALRD Section 5G, Resilience Project and Subaward Subcontract Notification Term, addressing the process for submitting information post-award to DOE for resilience projects and subawards. And finally, a government-generated statement of project objectives was provided. Also note that various terms and conditions were updated and revised, including those pertaining to Davis-Bacon Act and the Buy American Act. How is the cost match computed and reflected in the application? The state or Indian tribe must provide a 15% cost match on the entire federal allocation. For example, if an Indian tribe receives a $100,000 year one federal allocation, it will be required to provide a $15,000 cost match. This 15% cost match is what you reflect in the SF-424 Section 18 Estimated Funding Section submitted with your application. Resilience project subawards to eligible entities will require an additional cost match. That is either 100% or one third uh, for small utilities as outlined in the ALRD. This will be based on the individual projects and subawards and the cost match information for those will be provided to any TL post award in accordance with ALRD section 5.G resilience project and subaward subcontract notification. Several states and Indian tribes have asked when the cost match must be provided. States and Indian tribes and territories must agree that they will provide the cost match as part of the terms of the grant agreement. However, the cost match should be provided or dispersed as federal funds are expended during the course of project execution and, and the drawdown of federal funds. States Indian tribes and subrecipients may utilize in-kind contributions to meet cost share where applicable. May applicants incur costs before the award of the grant and be reimbursed through the grant when it is awarded. ALRD section 4E pre-award costs addresses the allowance of pre-award costs. Pre-award costs Pre-award costs are allowed for the technical assistance and administrative expenses, but there are restrictions and limitations that are addressed in this section of the ALRD. Do applicants need to create and submit a statement of project objectives for the application? No, the ALRD contains a government-generated statement of project objectives that will be used for all resulting grant agreements under this ALRD. The SEPO is contained in Appendix A of the ALRD. How and when do states and Indian tribes request and receive approval to proceed with resilience projects and associated subawards to eligible entities? Grant recipients may at any time after they receive a grant provide notification and docu documentation to DOE for resilience projects and subawards. This process is described in ALRD Section 5G, Resilience Project and Subaward Contract Notifications. And I emphasize that you provide this anytime after you receive the grant. Be aware that the review of the documentation and required written concurrence by DOE may take considerable time and will be impacted by factors such as the National Environmental Policies Act or NEPA considerations. Please allow sufficient time for this process from when you provide the required information to DOE. I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope you found this presentation to be helpful in the preparation of your application. Information on additional webinars and support for the BIL Section 40101D Formula Grant Program will be posted at the website provided 
as it as it becomes available. Thank you.